Okay, so this is the setup. It's showing two long straight horizontal wires that are parallel and a distance 2A apart. Both wires carry current I. And um, one of the things that I think you ought to know and use is the, the formula for magnetic field due to the uh, long line of current. So, I mean, you know, beyond the formula, <laughs> you should have intuitive understanding of the magnetic field. So for example, the wire at the top, the current going from left to right, you have a magnetic field that go around the circles um, um, or go around the circles, um, kind of around the straight current. And um, the direction of the circle is such that, let me use the right hand rule. So the current is going from uh, left to right. So at the top, you should have magnetic field that's uh, pointing. Oh, by the way, here I'm using the second right hand rule, which you see mentioned in the textbook. I'm pointing my thumb in the direction of current, then the direction my fingers curl in is the, um, is the direction of the, the, the circular magnetic field. I guess I was using this rule earlier too. Um, so thumb is the direction of the current. So at the top, the magnetic field is pointing out of the screen and at the bottom it's pointing into the screen. So this is the general field as it's going around. And you know, it's not just uh, this circle, it kind of expands over the whole space. In fact, there's a form, this is the formula for the magnitude of the magnetic field over a line or not I, uh, B magnetic field of a uh, line. And uh, I'm gonna try to convert the coefficient in front. I haven't memorized uh, in terms of the, the permeability of free space. I think if I rewrite it in the constants I'm trying to use, it's rewritten this way. Two Coulomb constant over C squared times the current divided by the distance, let's say, uh, let me use R for the distance. Um, yeah, I think that's right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the units will work out right because when you look at the Biot-Savart's law, it used to have the square here, but it also had the delta L there. So for infinite line, all the, those factors go away and you have I over R and the unit should work out. So, so the magnetic field will decrease in strength as it goes farther away from the line, uh, decrease in strength as, um, as inversely proportional to the distance. So that's for the top. And for the bottom, it's actually exactly the same. They are identical lines. And so um, it'll have circular magnetic field, and at the top, it should be coming out of the page. At the bottom, it should be going into the page, um, which means at this midpoint here, we get something interesting. We have magnetic field due to the top wire, which is going, uh, let me just double check, yeah, out in, <laughs> which is going into the page and magnetic field from the bottom wire, which should be coming out of the page. So they are in opposite directions. And staring at this expression for a while, I believe the magnitude of the magnetic field due to the top and magnetic field due to the bottom are the same. So they're just gonna cancel out. I guess at point P1, you have zero magnetic field, so. Zero. Yeah, I think it's zero. Um, you know, only uses the known parameters. <laughs> okay, that that was easy enough. Let's look at magnetic field at P two. So um, I have to imagine drawing a kind of a bigger circle around the top wire. So if I have a bigger circle uh, centered around the top wire. This is kind of bottom half of that bigger circle. Then at this bottom point here, magnetic field due to the top will still point into the page. That's the over the direction doesn't change with the distance. And magnetic field due to the, the lower wire, let me 
draw a bigger circle, but you know, not as big as the first one I drew. So this is kind of the half of the circle. Then here, the magnetic field also points into the page. So at point P2, the magnetic field due to the two wires, they're going to be adding in the same direction. So, um, so what I would do is, okay, I'm calculating the net magnetic field. That's gonna be magnetic field due to top plus magnetic field due to bottom. They point in the same direction. So I just write down this formula applying the, the, the distance R. So for the top wire, the distance R is going to be 2A plus 2A, 4A. So it's gonna be 2K over C squared times I over uh, 4A. And the magnetic field due to the bottom wire is gonna be 2KE over C squared times I over 2A. So you go through the algebra and when you're done with algebra, you should get K over C squared <laughs> and the numerical coefficients will work out to be one half plus one, so three halves. Um, three halves uh, K C squared uh, I over A. And this is uh, one of the rare questions that ask for analytical expression. So um, this should be the answer. Uh, three half K E over C squared times I over A. And the answer here should be uh, out of, wait, into the page. <laughs> so let me plug in those answers and see. Um, I'm actually a little bit curious if I programmed in these coefficients, uh, I there's a good chance I didn't do that. So uh, we'll test it and see. If, if it doesn't work, then I don't how to change the, the oh, actually under bars. Yeah, so I, uh, I need to fix these questions. Um, <laughs> so, okay, so when I pl plug in this way, uh, right now it won't work. So let me just demonstrate that it won't work. And uh, for the purpose of, let's see, I think I can actually fix it on the fly. So let me do that. And I'll, I promise to do it with the rest of the questions. Um, so it should be into the page. Um, now, so this doesn't, we, uh, it wouldn't have worked before either, um, C squared. So even that still won't work. And it's because I didn't program in this possibility of uh, coefficients. So what all these coefficients amount to is really this. It amounts to, uh, let me write it in here and I'll delete the rest later. It amounts to the permeability of free space divided by four pi. That's what it amounts to. And um, so replacing that coefficient with this, it should work. Uh, not changed. Can I, let me just, I don't know what little constant has had me having changed the things, you know? So now it should work here. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised that no one reported that this question has broken. Um, and what I needed to do to make it accept this answer is I need to program in that uh, possibility as well. Okay. Um, K over C squared times I over A. So it's not the exact same expression as what you saw in the answer, but um, the system, it actually evaluates it numerically. So it checks for algebraic equivalence by checking with the numbers. <laughs> so, so yeah, that, um, so this question hopefully is a good practice for figuring out um, the geometries of magnetic fields and applying, oh, applying superposition principle to, um, to add the magnetic field, see how they add up to zero here, see how they uh, add up to this net magnetic field here. Um, so uh, I guess, uh, so I don't always uh, explicitly invoke superposition principle, but whenever I do something like this, there has to be superposition principle uh, backing it up. And uh, I will point out some circumstances where um, superposition principle doesn't work. There's a couple of good examples that I'll mention 
so so 